All right, another month is over. November is done. We are now in the last month of the year. December is here, which is crazy to think about. So seven movies in November. So let's go through, and I'm going to rank the past seven films from my worst to the best. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Tyson, and we are here to talk about movies. That's right. We do movie reviews, movie trailer reactions. We cover major movie news on our Amendment podcast. We do movie rankings, and of course, we do Oscar Monday. So if all that sounds interesting to you, make sure to check us on out and subscribe. We are on the way to 1,000 subscribers, and I would love to have your guys' support as we go about that journey. All right, with all that done and out of the way, let's get on into it. November. It was a long month, seven movies that I saw, by far the most out of this year, and you know, some of my favorite movies of the year came out of this month, so it was a pretty good month when it comes to movies. So let's just dive right into it and get into number seven, and at number seven comes The Killer. This is the new David Fincher film starring Michael Fassbender. I wish this one worked for me. I was super excited to see this one, however, I feel like the trailer uh, Miss Marta did this movie because I thought it was going to be a pretty good action movie. And it was just this insight. And to me, it was this weird insight into this killer who Michael Fassbender plays. And we get, you know, we just follow him after one kill at, at the beginning. The beginning scene is pretty good. Uh, but, he, you know, he doesn't really have success on that. And we just follow him through through this time. And it's just not really interesting to me. It's kind of, it's boring at times, you don't really care what's happening with his character. And yeah, I got Tilda Swinton in here at the end, which was a pretty cool dynamic between the two of them. But ultimately, this one just failed big time for me over succeeding. And I wish I liked it. I know some people out there did. It, it's got an okay reviews, but just not one of my favorites. And actually pretty disappointing because I was looking forward to the new David Fincher film. So The Killer comes in at number seven. And at number six, we got The Marvels. This is the newest MCU film, the last one to come out this year. And unfortunately, this one didn't really work for me that much as well. Now, at the end, did I have an enjoyable time with this one? I did. But I don't know what the story was. It really wasn't there. Um, it, we were just kind of thrown into, okay, Monica Rambeau, Amon Vellani being Miss Marvel, Avery Larson being, being uh, Captain Marvel. Their powers are switched. I thought that's kind of what the movie was going to be about. But they seem to figure that out within, like, the first 20 minutes of the movie. And when they have a fight scene, uh, you know, when they're changing powers, that's really cool. Like, that's by far my favorite part of this film. And the rest of it was just forgettable, along with the villain, Darben. And that was probably one of the worst MCU villains, maybe even the worst. I, I don't really understand her motive. The what she was trying to do was just lazy storytelling in my mind and this movie is saved by the chemistry between the three main actresses and their characters who are fantastic and I love them in this film but it's confusing with the Nick Fury we see here I do think this movie takes place before Secret Invasion but if you see Secret Invasion that Nick Fury is way different than this Nick Fury so I wish they would have uh, you know maybe explained that that more or made it known that it was before Secret Invasion because that's the only thing that makes sense to me uh, but yeah, this this film is just not good. It's just disappointing. Uh, I do enjoy it at the end of the day, but it's not one I'm going to go back and rewatch. So the Marvel comes in at number six, followed at number five is Wish, Disney's newest film. And like I said in my review, it, you know, it had so much potential. I was really excited for this one. This is the film that's, uh, you know, celebrating Disney's 100th year. And they just couldn't stick the landing with it. I thought Asha, played by Ariana DeBose, was great. I did love her character and the dynamic with her friends and her grandfather as well. But Chris Pine being King Magnifico here, not a good villain to me. I didn't really care. And, and the story itself, I felt, was kind of bland um, anyway. Especially how they ended this film. Just wasn't a fan of that. I kind of felt it was also lazy storytelling. The animation style here is different. Like I said in my review, I feel like this is one that's kind of a mix between the new Disney animation and the classic ones shown in, like, Cinderella and Peter Pan. Uh, I wish they would have chosen one and not done the mix, because for me, the mix didn't really work out that well. The music in here isn't really that memorable at all. The, the song in the trailer, which I don't know if it's called Wish or not, but 
I think that song is great that Ariana DeBose sings, but the rest of them are just not that good. Uh, so at the end of the day, this was a disappointment because of what it's celebrating and of how much faith I think Disney needs to have in this one, but it's just not doing well. So Wish comes in at number five. Followed at number four, we have Napoleon. This is Ridley Scott's new film starring Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. All three of them, I think, do a great job in this one. I think the actors particularly a little bit more, maybe. Um, you know, Joaquin Phoenix in here, obviously playing the short Emperor Napoleon, yeah, he did fantastic. He really did. His no accent didn't bother me. I thought the way he went with the character was a very interesting look. Vanessa Kirby, though, was the standout for me and her dynamic with Napoleon. Being able to pull the strings, just fantastic. I really love their dynamic together. And I love solo scenes we got of Napoleon when he was figuring out of, you know, his wife's Josephine, who Vanessa Kirby plays, of her, you know, cheating and all that stuff. And I thought, the raw emotion he brought to his face in those particular moments worked very well. Obviously, the action scenes in here were fantastic. Ridley Scott knows how to do this. I just wish there were more of them in this two-hour and 45-minute film. It felt longer than Oppenheimer, and it kind of felt longer than Killers of the Flower Moon. And that's where the negatives come in. The story just wasn't really here. Uh, you know, I feel like there's things they wanted to explain more, but only we got only a minute of that. It feels like a new year and a new era location is thrown up every two or three minutes during this film and that that's where the negatives are for me you know the, the story and how they explain the history in here I did feel like we're rushed but yet long at the same time and I think that four hour cut might do the film better but the theatrical version we got here that that's where it failed for me was the story so that's why it's lower than I want it to be but after seeing it and even after my review I believe I gave it a 5.5 or 6 out of 10 um if I gave it a 6, you know, I think I'll raise it to a 6.5. I'm liking it more as I remember it. Uh, but, I, like, again, it's too long, and the, the story in here was just not good. But the acting in was, was phenomenal. So, Napoleon at number 4. Coming in at number 3, we have Eli Roth's film, Thanksgiving. If you told me I would enjoy this one as much as I did, I would have said you're crazy. Because it's Eli Roth, and usually I'm not the biggest fan of his films. However, this one was phenomenal. Especially this opening scene with Black Friday. Wow. I mean, talk about me just having my mind blown and I was just speechless. My mouth was open. I couldn't believe that's how they started this movie. And it was just, it started on such a high and hey, it, it kind of ended on a high too. The third act was a little bit weak here than the reveal and everything like that. I didn't think was per done particularly well. Um, but hey, act one and two. Yeah, they, they worked very well story-wise. I think they were great. And the mythology of, like, this killer and, and everything like that was, was pretty good. The mask was great. Like I said, the reveal, not so much. But the characters in here, you know, kind of forgettable. You're okay with them getting stabbed or killed or whatever uh, they, they get. But I just liked this idea. And I think the follow-through on the idea worked very, very well here. So that's why I enjoyed Thanksgiving so much, and I put it at number three. Coming in at number two, I have Anatomy of a Fall. This is a film that I was so excited to see. I knew it had Oscar chances, and I understand completely why it has Oscar chances after seeing this one. It's fantastic. The story in here is so simple, yet beautiful and like amazing at the same time. What it is, you know, Sandra Huller is a mother to her child and also a husband to or also a husband, also a wife to her husband. And, you know, the husband falls off of their house and dies. And that's really it. Like, it, how does it go from there? The police think her as a suspect, put her on trial for the killing. And, you know, did she do it? Did she not do it? You're asking yourself that question multiple times while watching the movie. And you switch your opinion, uh, I would say, throughout the film as well. It, it's just fantastic. And Sandra Huller in here gives an incredible performance. So does her child in here. And so does the husband. I do forget the actresses' names on that one. But they were all fantastic. Justine Trey, I thought, did a beautiful job directing this one. I love the way it was edited. I love the cinematography. I love the score. And I, again, love the simplicity of this story. But it was so beautiful at the same time. So Anatomy of the Fall comes in at number two. But coming in at number one is a film I was so excited to see. I knew it had Oscar chances as well. And it is so damn near perfect. And that is The Holdover. 
starring Paul Giamatti, Devoy jo- Divine Joy Randolph, and Dominic Sessa, directed by Alexander Payne. This film is a feel-good movie, but also makes you feel so many emotions while watching it. It is a roller coaster ride, I would say, with emotions, and I love a movie like that. This just was so beautiful and elegant in storytelling. The character development in here was fantastic. You did care about them. You cared about the premise, and you cared about where they would go in the future. That is a damn near perfect movie for me. This film is an instant classic for me to watch around the holidays. It has that holiday vibe with Christmas. If you don't know the story, Paul Giamatti character, grumpy teacher, uh, Divine Joy Randolph plays a cook, Mary, uh, for the high school, and Dominic Sessa, you know, obviously plays a student, along with another group of kids. They get stuck behind uh, on, thanks- or on Thanksgiving, on uh, holiday break for Christmas holidays, and Paul Giamatti has to basically babysit them. And that's it. You know, that's that's our adventure that, that we get taken along here. And obviously, in the, you see in the trailer, the kids get to go away, all except for Dominic Sessa's character. And that just leaves him and Paul Giamatti and Divine Joy Randolph. And those three, their chemistry, their dynamic on screen is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And I love the character building we get to see, especially from Giamatti's character. He's kind of like a hard shell. And at the end of the movie... He's still a hard shell, but, you know, a more heartfelt hard shell, I would guess. And it's just beautiful. And Paul Giamatti in here gives an incredible performance. I loved Killian Murphy and Oppenheimer, but I might have to give the Oscar to Paul Giamatti for this one. I, I just think it's so elegant. It's beautiful. You make us fall in love with this grumpy character. And that's not always easy to do. And Alexander Payne, I think, did a fantastic job directing this one. I love the score. I love the 70s feel of this movie as it feels like it was shot in the 70s which is fantastic and divine joy randolph in here also gives a very heartfelt performance um, as mary as well so this film an a plus for sure my one of my favorite films of the year so that is why the holdovers comes in at number one all right guys i just gave you my top seven or my top seven my only seven that i saw of new releases in november what do you think of my list Let me know yours down below. Which ones have you seen? Which one was your favorite? Are any of the holdovers or Anatomy of the Fall? Or is one the killer and you just disagree with my take putting it at number seven? Let me know all your thoughts and more in the comments below. And I do have reviews for, you know, a good percentage of, I think, all of these actually, except for the killer, on the channel. So make sure to go check those out. Uh, Links for those videos will also be in the description. All right. Guys, that's going to do it for me here in this video. So until the next one, stay safe out there. Hope you guys have a good one, whatever time you're watching this. And I will catch you on the next one.